We welcome you back to Longhorn Weekly from here, Pluckers, the West Campus location here in Austin. Craig Way, Coach Sark, joining us right now on the hotline, uh, all-time, lifetime Longhorn, uh, All-American, 45 wins as starting quarterback, Walter Camp Award winner, Heisman Trophy finalist and runner-up. Please welcome Colt McCoy, who's on the uh, program with us. Hey, uh, it's What's great up, to have guys? you. I've, I appreciate you doing this. Uh, call it. Tell everybody first of all how you feeling. How's everything going? I know you did. Uh, you know, uh, after uh, the injury and everything, and and uh, working back through. How are you doing these days? Well, my body's never felt this good in the fall. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I understand that 13 years in the national football league does it does it feel a little bit weird uh not to be uh going through the day-to-day grind it can be at times uh you know i battled through an elbow injury and you know i feel pretty good right now but um i'm actually really happy with my family and uh kind of gotten a good routine with them and and um yeah i i, I watch football i i Keep up to date, but it's going to take a lot for me to go back out there, I think. Hey, Colt Sark here, man. How you doing, buddy? I'm awesome, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm sitting here looking at uh, a couple of your stats, and I'm kind of blowing my mind. That you don't you don't pay attention to sometimes until you, you, you see them kind of in bold. 45-8 and eight as a starter in, at the University of Texas. 45-8, and eight, man. 45 wins. That's that's phenomenal. And then I'm looking at your stat line here from the Iowa State game in 2007 when you guys win 56 to three. You play three quarters, 23 of 29 for 298, four touchdowns. One of which was a 58 yard touchdown pass. The other was a 44 yard touchdown run. I need a little of that mojo, man, for Quinn here Saturday night. What do you think? Can we can we pull that off? <laughs> Absolutely. You, def- you guys definitely can, man. I I feel you guys are like a just right on the verge of breaking out 50 points on somebody. Might as well do it this week, huh? That would, that would sound like good, good, good idea, good plan. Works. And, and Cole, I know obviously you've gotten to know you've gotten to know Quinn as well. You had to bounce back from injury during your career. Uh, he has bounced back as well. What do you say to a guy, uh, you know, like Quinn or something about about how you work through that, how you bounce back through that, and how you move on to the next thing and and recover your old self, so to speak. Yeah, you know, I mean, we all know when we sign up for football, there's a 100% chance of, you know, injuries. And, you know, very rarely as you get in this part of the season, is there anybody on the roster who's not dealing with something, right? And, you know, Quinn had the shoulder. He looked great last week. Um, And it's just something that you got to depend on uh, your trainers and your your strength staff and, you know, your coaches to kind of know where you're at and what, what you can do. And, um, I think I think Quinn's going to play great this weekend. I, I I feel like he's been playing great all year, and Sark keeps dialing him up, and and uh, I'm excited to watch for sure. The only thing about Iowa State is that grass gets real long because they know we got all kinds of speed. You know that they've got a new surface. They've 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 kind of went to the uh, similar to Green Bay surface where there's there's some turf mixed into the grass. So it's it's not it's not what it once was when 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 you were running around out there. So it's not ankle we'll, deep like yeah, we'll, it was we'll, in we'll 07. See, we'll see how that looks. Hey, wow, I, I wanted awesome. to switch gears. I want to switch gears into something else because I know, you know, when you came to UT, you redshirted your freshman year behind Vince. Okay, and obviously you were, you know, a big time player and and used to you know competing and played a bunch of sports growing up. And so we've got. Quinn here and and Arch is pl- and, and Malik has played and and there's Arch Manning right who's a freshman and he's going through his freshman year. Take me through a little. I know people probably don't ask you a lot about this. What your freshman year was like behind Vince and and that and that year and and kind of how that helped you in your future for the, for the next four years and what that looked like. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's a great question. Um, I I tell people close to me all the time and I've told Arch this before is that the red shirt year was the best thing that ever happened to me I mean I was not ready to play um, I mean playing at the University of Texas is so competitive and you got to earn your spot and your stripes every year um, but I just really uh, spent time with the coaches with Mad Dog and the strength staff you know I hit a little growth spurt that year and I was just really really intentional and, and really detailed and uh, getting into a routine and studying the offense and watching it week to week, uh, preparing like I would play. 
but knowing that I was likely going to redshirt and, you know, I needed to put on some weight. I needed to get stronger. I needed to get faster. I needed to process information quicker, right? It's, it's, there's a big jump from high school to college, especially when you're playing, you know, big time football, like, like, you know, we were at UT. So um, it was definitely um, the best thing that happened to me. Although, you know, as a competitor, it can be hard, right? Like, um, you you want to be out there playing with your with your buddies with your guys teammates, uh, but you know there was no chance I was going to play in front of Vince Young. So um, I I really used that year to my advantage, and um, yeah, I think I think it was a huge blessing for me. Well, I know this. One of Arch's uncles, Eli, said he was so glad he redshirted. The other uncle, Peyton, says he wished he had been able to redshirt, and that was the plan until uh, there was an injury that forced him in that. Colt McCoy's our special guest. Colt, hang on with us. We're going to uh, take a break. We're going to come back. We've got some other questions to get uh, to you as well as we continue a Longhorn Weekly from Pluckers, the West Campus location here in Austin. We'll continue in a moment. Rolls that way, looking to throw to battle, but throws downfield instead, and it's intercepted. Picked off, bringing it outside, in TCU territory is Terrence Brooks. Brooks, who last week tipped the pass that was picked off by Michael Tapp, comes up with one of his own. Terrence Brooks' his second interception of the season, and the Longhorns will take over in TCU territory at the Horn Frog 43. We welcome you back to Longhorn Weekly with Coach Sark from here, Pluckers, the West Campus location here in Austin. Uh, it, it probably does your heart good to see a guy like Terrence Brooks who tipped a pass that Michael Taft got for an interception one week come back and get one of his own the next week. Yeah, I, I was I was pumped for Terrence, but I was I was really excited for us because we've been talking about our two minute defense here for for a little bit of time now, where we've given up some some points and touchdowns at the end of the first halves and, and even some late in ball games, and so. Uh, I had made it a big emphasis to the defense before they took the took the field. I, you know, let's get a stop, but more importantly, let's go get a turnover. They're, they're, they're going to throw it to us because they need to throw it. They're going to try to get some points on the board. Let's let's disguise these coverages really well and go make a play on the ball. And Terrence did a great job of sinking underneath the corner route, getting the pick, and then setting it up. And we talk a lot about complimentary football. I think it's three or four plays later, Jonathan Brooks scores to, to extend that lead right before the end of the half. Our special guest right now is Colt McCoy, who joins us. Uh, Colt, uh, this start for Texas at 9-1 is the best since your last year, the 2009 season. And what I'm curious to get is your thoughts on the mentality of going on the road, because you guys won every road game. Uh, going all the way, obviously, into that national championship game. Uh, the Longhorns this year have won every true road game. The only loss, of course, the OU game, but they won every true road game. What, what about the mentality that it takes when you go on the road, especially, as you know, in a hostile environment like Ames can be? Yeah. No, I, I think that, you know, the mentality of, of the Longhorns, you know, you know, top down from Sark to everybody else is, you know, from the outside looking in, like we're nine and one, right? Every goal that we want to achieve is still right there in front of us, right? Whether that's on the road, whether that's at home, like that should be enough motivation in itself. You've played 10 games. It's been a grind. You, Your quarterback's battled through injuries. Your backup's won two games. Like there's a lot that has gone on, you know, on this football team. And, and we're, we're sitting in a position that is, you know, everything's in front of us. And so, you know, you know, for the message for me would be like, man, like there, there, there doesn't have to be a whole lot of, you know, motivational speeches and, and hype speeches. Like, like the goals are in front of you, man. Let's go get them. You know, I, I, I think you're spot on. And I, and I think that that takes, you know, maturity week in and week out to get that done. You know, I, I, I've probably thinking about that, that 09 team and your leadership and what that was like and the other leaders on that team uh, to have that mentality. And I think we've grown into that type of team now um, to where we've got players who have been with in the program with us for three years now and hearing a consistent message uh, and to now be in this position that really going on the road is about poise and composure. 
Uh, you know, I, yeah. I think some of the mistakes people make when they go on the road and especially hostile environments is they start playing emotional football. And when you get emotional, you start to make mistakes and, and things of that nature. And that's something I've been I've been really preaching to the guys and they've 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 really impressed me with this year is their poise, their composure on the road and then ultimately the connectivity and that idea of. You know, you got 70 guys on the road and, and the offense and the defense and the special teams all, you know, working complementary off of one another is huge as well. Yeah, I used to always, always remember uh, Greg Davis used to preach, like, no, no pre-snap penalties, like, especially on the road, right? It's going to be loud. Let's practice that. Let's be prepared for it. Let's understand it. And, like, let's have that on our minds, right? We're not going to have, you know, false starts and, you know, legal motions and these things when, you know, because when the crowd gets involved early in the game and you start, you know, having some dumb penalties like that, it just it kind of snowballs. And, you know, I remember that was always a really point of emphasis, a big point of emphasis, especially in the NFL, right? Like these places that you go in the division and, you know, we're going to Ames in conference, like don't let that crowd uh, get involved. And, and you can you can stop that by being disciplined and, and um, you know, not kicking yourself in the foot, you know, on things that you shouldn't do. Uh, Cole, a couple of lightning round questions for you here. Number one, what was your favorite play to call or that came in, your favorite play call to run? We'll go uh, trips right, Sam Pat, 538, hook curl. And and it was going to? Well, I had I had comebacks on the outside. I had a little, little hook route over the ball, and I had the slot receiver running like a middle read post. So, I kind of felt like I had answers versus all the coverages. And if I ever got stuck, that's what Coach D dialed up for me. Okay, all right. So that leads me into question two. Fact or fiction? Our good friend, uh, Quan Cosby, claims that he and not Shipley was your favorite target. Fact or fiction? <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course. Quan would that, say that, he right? claims that he claims that? Yeah, that's a fact. He, 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 he claims that. that. He goes, yeah, oh, man, sure. Colt, like, Colt wanted me more than Chip. He, he did. That's, what, that, 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 that's his claim. Fact or fiction on that? Well, if, if, Chip, if Chip started getting the football a little too much, Quan would definitely let me know about it. So I tried to, I tried to appease both of them. Okay, all right. And then one other thing for you. Um, I, I know this is Iowa State this week. Texas Tech, senior night is next week. But here's another fact or fiction for you. Didn't you always get a little more amped up? I mean, you were from Buffalo Gap. Didn't you get a little more amped up for playing Texas Tech than, say, some of the other teams in this league? Oh, yeah, 100%. You know, I went to a small school outside of Abilene, Buffalo Gap. Uh, our, our school was called Jim Ned. But, you know, if you graduated from my high school and you wanted to go to college, you went to Tech. And so I, I, I could pick out the faces in the stands every time I played there. And uh, I, I, I loved playing Texas Tech, other than 08. But <laughs> so no so it sounds that. like you're going to be back next Friday night for the game. What, what do we think, Cole? Any shot of that? Hey, sure. Why not? I, I mean, I'm unemployed right now. Might as well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a great way to be unemployed. And by the way, congratulations on uh, being uh, – newly elected to the Texas Sports Hall of Fame in the class of 2024. For folks who didn't know, Colt McCoy is going in to the Texas uh, Sports Hall of Fame. You've already been inducted in Texas High School Football Hall of Fame. Uh, that means you're one of the all-time iconic sports figures in the history of the state of Texas. What does it mean to you? <laughs> well, thank you very much. Yes, I'm very humbled by that. I mean, I um, – and Texas through and through, whether it's the state of Texas, the University of Texas, um, just what that has done for me is I can't even put into words. And to be honored that way, um, I, I see it as just, um, you know, a, a wonderful award that uh, there's so many people in my life that have played a role in that, from my great teammates to my great coaches to my parents to, you know, anybody that has been involved um, along the way. I, I'd, I'd be so foolish to tell you that, you know, Look what I did. And so I, I'm grateful. My family's grateful. And uh, I, I'm, I think it's a really cool award. And, and, and I want to represent the University of Texas um, as best I can. Well, Colt, I, I, just congratulations again uh, from me. And I, I know that uh, you say you're unemployed now, but uh, I'm sure you've got a bright future. A is if you want to be an analyst on TV, be great at that. 
he'd be a hell of a coach, man. So I just <laughs> let, let, let me know if that's the path you want to go, man. You, you've got great rapport with everybody around you. You're such a knowledgeable guy and an unbelievable experience. So uh, wish you the best of luck. And, and you know this, man, you're always welcome here. It's always fun having you around. And hopefully you take us up on coming back next Friday night uh, when we play Tech after Thanksgiving. For sure. There's nothing better than beating the Red Raiders, man. we got to get it done this weekend, but um, I'll holler at you next week. All right, buddy. Colt, thanks again, and congratulations. Thanks for joining us. All right. Thank you, guys. Hook em. All right. Hook em. That is Colt McCoy. Uh, coming up, Sark and I will take a look at this week's opponent, the Iowa State Cyclones, the Longhorn Weekly with Coach Sark from Pluckers here in Austin and presented by the Texas Lottery continues on the Longhorn Network and the Longhorn Radio Network from Learfield.